Hello, welcome to the No Excuses podcast. This is episode 22. My name's Anne, I live in Worcestershire with my hubby and our dog. And today I'm going to talk to you about sewing, knitting and a few other things. And we've got some questions and answers as well to um, go through. So it won't be a short one, but hopefully if I talk very fast, it won't be too long. So have you been? I'm okay. I'm uh, dressed in my sort of um, house, my summer house cardigan today, as you see. It's what I sort of um, view as my sort of, oh, I wouldn't necessarily go out in this. Nothing wrong with the cardigan, it fits and everything. It's just that I wear it a lot at home. But I'm having to uh, wear loose clothing at the moment because I've got a bit of a sore patch on my back. Um, and I'm on, on antibiotics for it. So I'm not really all dressed up. But I've put a bit of slap on, you know, just to counter that. And I have got red lipstick on. Well, red for me anyway, but it's not showing up very well. I've only got thin lips, so lipstick doesn't really um, do for me. So why do I keep buying it then? I don't know. Right, I'm already off on the tangent, so... This is the way it's going to be today. <clears throat> Hello, let's talk first about the admin. We have two make-alongs going on in the um, as part of the podcast. The one that ends next Tuesday is the stash or shelf mail. And that is where you have made something, not necessarily knitted or crocheted. It could be sewing, it could be anything where you've had the materials for a while and or you've had the pattern or the instructions for a while. Do you know, that's the best summing up I've done during the course of this mail. I'll get right to the end and I can say it as succinctly as possible. Anyway, so I've got quite a few entries already. People have entered on Instagram as well and I'll put the hashtags down downstairs, I was going to say, down below. Um, or you can email me and I've got a couple of email entries as well. So when I next, the mail will close probably next Wednesday morning, which is the 1st of September. How did we get there so quickly? And then I will draw the winner then. Um, and well, the computer will draw the winner. I might get Tom to do it again. Just pick a number at random uh, and then I will um, say who it is on the next podcast. So if you've entered, please keep a lookout because you may be the winner. I've got to make the prize or part of the prize up yet. But we'll get there. Not a problem. Um, the other thing I'm entering, and I've just realised I haven't got it on me, so I'll have to pause the video in a bit. Um to go and get it as a finished item is I'm entering the gnome along with the Ange of Yarn and Yarns is running and that is running for it was from the beginning of August and, and it runs to the 18th of September and so far I've put one gnome in but I will show you that in a minute and there was me thinking I was all organised for once if you can hear any noise in the background the door's slightly open but um, as you can probably see in the reflection of the mirrors, but um, so Bertie can come in and out and, and Tom's indoors on his computer. So you might hear a few lumps and bumps. Hopefully nothing that will interfere with your viewing. Yeah, I was hoping, speaking of make-alongs and knit-alongs, etc. I was hoping to join in with Roots across the pond, Shaw Cow, but I've Tom hasn't even got this stuff out of the uh, loft yet, let alone me sort of wind it and knit it up. Um, I'm going to make a shawl for my cousin who lives in North Wales. Uh, yeah, so there's no way I'm going to get that finished by the end of the date of her mail. So if she runs another one, I will try and enter that as well. I'm not very good at entering mails and remembering. And I think the podcast is helping me concentrate a bit more on those things because I have to write things down. Um, so, yeah, it does help. Okay. 
Well, first of all, let's talk about finished items as is traditional on these things. I have got two finished things and the first one is my sewing machine cover and I'm going to put some photographs in while I talk about it. I showed it you last time inside out. I made a very basic cover um, earlier in the year because my sewing machine, which I've only had for uh, just under a year now, because it was a birthday present, um, and it needed a cover because it's in full sun and we get the sun in the back and you know it, it needed covering because give it a few years it would affect the plastic so I did um, a quick pattern and that worked but I've always wanted to get on and make a padded one so as I showed you last time I've made a padded and slightly quilted um, cover from some fat quarters that I had from Hobbycraft and I'm really pleased with the finished result. Um, it's taken me a while. It's taken me a lot of physical effort because it's big for me anyway. Because I'm sat down all the time. It's been a bit big to wrestle because the foam always wants to return to its original shape. Which is what it's supposed to do. Um, and I had a lot of trouble putting the uh, binding around the top. But I made the binding myself just after I talked about it on the last episode. And I put it in and it was really, really horrible on the corners. So this time I have took it all out and I've hand sewed it in. And it's still not brilliant. But do you know what? I'm past caring about that bit. So then I tried to attach the lining to the, <laughs> to the inside. And again, I had to do that a couple of times. I ended up hand stitching it in. Because with something bulky, and because I didn't think about what order to do it in, when I started, because I should have done the binding first, I think, and then put it all together. But because I didn't think about that, I had to keep going over things again and again until they were to my satisfaction. And I have to say, the bar is low on this in terms of finish, etc. The bit I'm most pleased with is the um, overall look at a distance. If you stand back and look at it, there doesn't seem to be much wrong with it. But if you go in and look at it more closely, there's a hell of a lot wrong with it. Um, but I put the matching binding, the coordinating binding, around the bottom yesterday. I stitched that on the machine on one side and I, um, and then I hand-stitched it the other side. Um, I just need to have a word with somebody. Oh, no, it's all right. Because Tom's just had his lunch, he thinks I've got something as well. Bertie, not Tom. And he's just coming to see me, so I was going to tell him that I'd got nothing, but he's just laid down. Mum had a good idea of this is my binding that I made with those little thingy my bobs that I showed you last time. And you just pull it through and press and then press it again. And I used all the turquoise and I've made I don't know how many yards of binding loads. Um but Mum said to me, because it was getting fiddly and, and the bottom of the sewing machine cover was higher and lower and, you know, with the foam and the lining, etc. So I tried to level it out. And then Mum said, why don't you tr sew two bits together? So I did. So it became twice the thickness. And then I turned that into bias binding by folding it over and pressing. So I've got a deeper um, trim on the bottom than I have at the top. So, yeah, I'm pleased with it at a distance. But more importantly, it does the job that I want it to. And that's what all our makes are about. Well, some of them. You know, if I was giving it to somebody, well, I would never. I would have thrown it in the bin and said, right, you can have something else. Because <laughs> it, it's not good enough quality to give to anybody at all. So my next sewing project, before I do the bags for the mouths, for the mouth, um, or I might do it after that, actually, is I'm going to make a little mat to go underneath it and light, um, trim it with the trim it with the um, the same binding. So this is from the same fat quarter pack that I got from Hobbycraft about a year ago. It is slightly autumnal, maybe. So I don't know whether they'll reintroduce it again. But they do a lot of their things that they don't they don't do a second time. So yeah. 
so yeah and I, i'm gonna pause you now and go and get my other finished item this is my gnome this is nessa nessa is by sarah shira of Imagine landscapes and she's got little arms and I knitted the garter beard because um, I didn't have any fluffy wool to do um, um, on eyelash wool or anything yeah. and then the um, the hat on this one gets crumpled and it goes sideways which is rather nice except I did um, I did make a mistake in the pattern that I can see very clearly but unless you've knitted it, you wouldn't be able to say. And basically, she's made out of scraps. I've made. Uh, I went into my um, bag of. Can't remember what this is called, but I thought they coordinated quite well. Um, I don't know where the top comes from. This is a single. It's very soft and fluffy. And then I found a little bit of pink at the end of a magic ball that I just wound on. I use that for her hands and her nose. So, the, and the, so this is Nessa, and I will be doing another one. And I do like the one with the tricorn hat um, that Sarah does, so I might get that one up. Anyway, so those are my finished objects for this week. And then we move on to progress. Well, I'm not going to show you my mum's cardigan because I finished both fronts on it. You know, the stripy pink as well. Um... But next, I'm hoping now I've finished the sewing machine cover that I will start on the sleeves of Mum's cardigan because I'd like to get that finished actually so she can wear it during the winter. But I haven't shown you this for a little while and this is my runway tee by Stella Ackroyd. And this is made from Lithuanian linen from Midwinter Yarns. I'm going to say the colours wrong, and I think it's pumice, I think. It's O'Donnell and then bronze green in that order. But I'll put the correct ones down below. It's only this one I get confused with because I've got another colour of putty somewhere. Um, those Starcraft naturals. So one's one and one's the other and I get them mixed up. Maybe this is putty. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, so what I'm doing, I'm just, I've done ten row rounds apart from the rib ignoring the rib and now i'm on to eight row rounds and i don't know whether you can see they slightly narrower and i'm going to go up the body until i get to four i think and then i'll probably leave it at that i may throw a little bit of texture in at that point so yeah it's it's nice to knit with and i think oh, but the ends are I don't know if you watch Salma from Little Big Knits and she loves her linen and she was saying about you know it can be difficult to to actually weave in at the end and secure it see I've got things like this um I just, I'm making up. you can see that against my hand I can't get any closer to the camera and I've got loops like that where I've knitted it and the slub of sort of it's slubby it's released and it looks like I've got holes in some places and i know i've said about this before so i think i'm going to wash it and then do any sort of necessary repairs because a lot of the holes may close up as it blooms because it will bloom slightly when it's wet so that's my um my runway tea making good progress it's going to be like a tunic by the time i finish i can see this coming but it'll be if we ever ever have any decent weather in this country I, i've probably said it before but i live for summer not the really really hot days but just to sit outside under the body or under my sun hat with uh, the extension lead my tablet and my knitting and i am in heaven and that hasn't happened this year i think i've sat out about three times because when it was really hot it was far too hot so um me to sit out and I find it a bit sort of, it, it's a shame, isn't it? Because the whole of August has been rubbish. Never mind. Our plum trees aren't doing very well. Um, we've got grubs in most of them. Uh, we had a couple of green gauges that came quite early. And we've got some great big, and I mean big plum, black plums, 
that Tom's going to make some jam out of hopefully soon. But they're still a bit firm, but Mum said you should pick them under ripe. So when we, every time he looks at a Victoria, they're a bit early at the moment, but he, Tom's looked at them and he thinks, oh, that's ready for picking. And we've had the odd one, but it could sit in half. And nine times out of ten, there's a grub in it. And we don't want that. Do we, Anita? Because we don't want grubs in our jam, as Anita was saying about her blackberry jam that she made. And if you don't watch Anita and Gargan, it's then why not? Actually, that's the one thing I haven't done is I haven't made a list of podcasters. Uh, you know, you're used to me by now. I know you'll forgive me and I'll put it on the list for next time. But I'm a bit sort of <laughs> all the time. Um, and I've been wrestling. Oh, no excuses. No excuses. I haven't done it. I meant to do it before I sat down. But rather than just wheel some names off, I take a bit more care and tell you. But Anita is one of those people that I always watch when her podcast arrives. Now, okay. What have I been buying? Not a lot. Ha, huh, that surprised you, didn't it? Not a lot, actually. I'm waiting for my nature club to arrive from Rhapsody Die. And I've got these from, and these are my ombre minis. I'm trying to think to put them in. Oh, I don't know. That order, I think. Anyway, you can see that they will. Oh, dee -dee -dee. And they're very, very pretty. Again, they're a bit bright for... I wouldn't buy these colours for wearing. I prefer something a bit more pastel-y. But, you know, for a blanket, it doesn't matter, doesn't it? Yes, I know it's going to be an expensive blanket. But my current thinking is hexy blanket because I've never done hexagons before. And I'm thinking hexy rainbow blanket and just join them to one another with the yarn because I should get at least two hexes out of a 20 gram mini, depending on what size I do. And then I could join them with um, Close Your Ears Julia Grey, like a pale, not a silver grey, but something mid. Not as dark as a charcoal. But we'll see. Um, these are from Vicky Brown Designs. You can't really see a name on these. Because <laughs> because the, the minis are so small, narrow. Her label goes right around them. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Um, I was saying about joining them, wasn't I? I've lost my thread of thought totally. I was saying, yeah, I should get two of them, so I could join them to one another with this, with the same yarn, um, or I could get a contrast yarn and then sort of um, lay it all out. Oh yeah, what I was saying, Vicky Brown put a photograph of, of of all her ombres this year so far, and it looked really really nice. So I am, um, but they are bright. They they're, they're not. Um, I would normally go for something, say, not pastel-y or um, a little bit more muted. But, say, it doesn't matter. They're still very, very nice colours. Um, but, yeah, the colours go, flow really well. And I've said to her, are you intending to carry it up on next year? I hope so, because otherwise I won't have enough different colours to make a blanket. So there you go. And the other thing, I've, one of the other things I bought was, um, I finally got around to buying a sew line glue pen. Because I'm getting increasingly close to doing some English paper piecing. And I know that will become, that will come in very, very useful. Um, then, last two things I bought. Um, I bought some brooch backs. I bought 50 brooch backs because I'm going to make 50 brooches. I'm not sure when. I'm sure some of them will fail. You know, brass coloured ones and I just thought about the felt and the lace that I'm collecting um, to make little brooch scenes and then I bought don't look mother because you'll go I've got some of that I just bought some very narrow lace a little bundle of it from um, eBay uh, it's got the blue in that I wanted but it, as I say it's 
just little pastel colours. Um, I don't can't remember how much it is. It was about three pound. So that will help me with my little project I've got in mind. Bearing in mind that I am not artistic. But if you don't try, you won't find out, will you, man? So I do a lot of talking to myself on this podcast, don't I? And I should be talking to you. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, and that is all of I've got in terms of progress. So, questions. Well, the first question I had actually was to ask about Kaz, and I've heard from Kaz, and let's just say she she's doing okay. And I think that was her term. She's doing all right. Um, maybe as well as can be expected and those are my words not hers um i know she's busy with family and she's getting a lot of support from friends local to her um but i suppose she was busy with her mom and everything and then and now things are starting to settle down a bit maybe it that's the time when it may all catch up on you but um yeah I'm going to drop her a line in a proper post uh, sometime this week or early next week. She said she thinks she will return to podcasting. But obviously, you know, none of us are putting her under pressure. And I will certainly say that to her um, when I write to her. But um, she's basically, she's got to do what she wants to do. She's got to go with what her heart and her head tell her. Um, because she doesn't need any other pressure on her head. Although sometimes distractions can be helpful hello Bertie what would you like hey I've got nothing no I'm gonna lie down I'm gonna lie down puppy there's a good boy he's a quiet dog so yes um Pip asked how Kaz was and that's the update that I've got so Sally now, Sally, I don't know where your comment's gone, so I went and found it under notifications. So I'm hoping you hadn't deleted it, or I deleted it by accident, or I've hidden it by somehow, but I can't find out why. So I've gone back in uh, into YouTube and looked under notifications, and I've found your lovely entry. Thank you. And I've just written them down, so I haven't thought about them, and I think sometimes... You can think too long about these things, can't you? I can't answer them all. I'm going to give one or two of them a bit more a bit more thought. But um, my all-time favourite knit. Um, there have been a couple of things that I liked. I liked that cardigan that I did in the 80s that was um, with the shawl collar that I put a photograph of me in. Um early on in my podcast and I'll see if I can find that again um, and I, I wore that quite a lot and it was dark green and it, yeah totally me and also interestingly enough another green cardigan <laughs> I had some Rowan Lima colour which was it was um, a chainette yarn sort of blown and beautifully soft and it came the one I bought I bought it from um oh, what are they called House of Fraser when they had a haberdashery and um, they sold yarn in packs I used to sell it off um, I bought a big pack of that in the green colourway and it went from sort of almost a bottle green a muted bottle green to um, a much paler one in very very soft stripes beautiful and I made a v-neck cardigan and somebody Put it in the washing machine and it fell apart it literally fell apart i think it was mainly alpaca i'm not sure without looking it up but um i, I really like that because it fitted me and you all know how badly i am at bad i am at making things that actually fit me um and that was wasn't too many years ago since we moved into the bung anyway so that was a shame because i missed that it was quite a versatile cardigan being green being one of my favorite colors or probably my favorite color yeah, and, and also in the same wash, I had another lemur jumper, a jumper in mustard that was v-neck and it was done in like um, a fisherman's rib. 
Oh, and you could just go to it when it comes out of the washing machine. And this is only on a 40 wash. And you watch some of the Scandinavians talk about throwing stuff in their washing machines. And you think, well, why does mine do that? You know, like, no, yeah, OK, it was a 40, not a 30 wash, but I didn't think it was that aggressive. And I rarely use the 1500 spin, but it isn't the spinning that kills it. I don't think it's the agitation while it's washing. So that's my impression of agitation. Agi oh, I don't want to. If you can't say it a second time, don't try to say it a third time. Least favourite. Well, I don't know if I've ever had anything I've really disliked knitting. The, the, the thing I've least liked, liked doing recently, and I, it's a horrible thing to say, is my one of my school friends, so we go back many, many years, um, I offered, let's get that right, in, right at the beginning, I offered to repair a couple of baby shawls for her. And one of them was like more like a double knit, and my mum helped me with that one. And the other one was a, it was probably a three or a two ply, very fine, and it had been hand knitted. They're both hand knitted in white. Um, and like an idiot, I looked at the photographs and thought, yeah, I can repair those. Well, honestly, um, they had stains on them as well as holes where I think she'd put the baby. Uh, she'd use them as like a, a blanket when she was pushing him along in the pushchair and they got under the wheels because the holes were there and the dirt and oil off the wheels, which obviously wouldn't wash out without a bit more care, um, adding something like swarf feet, you know, rubbing it with something. Um, and yeah, I spent over 50 hours doing that, at least 50 hours, and I, I really began to resent it because it didn't end up looking brilliant you know i knew i couldn't win but i couldn't give in um you know a bit like that sewing machine club <laughs> but it was to give to somebody else so i had to do my best and then her son came on the line and said oh thank you Anne, so much for you know helping us with the shawls and i felt bad for saying that uh, by thinking such evil thoughts about the shawl but it went back and it was presentable and i said to her look i had to cut a bit of pattern out and but I've put the edge back on and I knitted the garter edge again around it. It's one of the classic shawl patterns, I think. But it was very, very pretty. But yeah, I made the best of a, a bad job there. Um, and it's sad, isn't it? Because it makes you not want to volunteer to do things for other people. People say to me, can you repair this or that, you know? Uh, and, I, and sometimes you have to say, no, I, I don't want to. Because you take on the responsibility of their item then. I don't mind having the odd challenge to do things, but it it just depends on what it is. And also, why would I want to repair something of somebody else's when I've got more than enough to do myself? <laughs> Not repairs. Um, although there are holes in my boxy that I wear in the winter. I need to address before I start wearing that again. But you know what I mean? It, it, it's very difficult, isn't it, to bridge that gap. You, you want to be, especially if it's a good friend and you want to help them. Uh, but certainly I would never honestly feel guilty about saying no to somebody that I don't know very well because, um, yeah, you know, what, I have an experience, but I don't necessarily, I can't sew things up brilliantly and things. So, yeah, anyway, that was probably my least thing, and it wasn't for me, the least thing I remember repairing um, recently anyway. And then Sally asked, what's my favourite food? Well, it's ch chocolate. I am obsessed with chocolate. I love chocolate. But I really only like milk chocolate. I'm not keen. I'll, use, I'll eat a little bit of um, flavoured plain chocolate, dark chocolate. And I do eat cabbage dark milk. Um, but I'm trying to be good at the moment, so chocolate's a bit out of the... Um, mm. It's not something I'm having on a regular basis. But, yeah, I get the ebgbs if i know there isn't any chocolate in the house but i know there's some in the drawer in the kitchen at the moment so i'm, I'm safe my heart can steadily beat if uh savory well i do like i don't know really i mean you know i quite like indian and italian i like homemade pizza better than shop-bought pizza um 
I don't know what I really, really like. I don't know whether you find this if you're if you're an older lady like me, um, late middle age, let's call it that. that I'm going off things that I've always enjoyed, um, and it's so strange to me. Yeah, chocolate's my first thought when I think favourite food. Uh, I can't think of anything else savoury that's just one thing that I like. I wouldn't mind a, a, an authentic Indian occasionally. I quite like things like onion barges and samosas, <laughs> but they're full of grease. <laughs> you know, a little, a little at a time. So yeah, okay. And then Sally asks, um, if I could have a guest visitor on the podcast, um, who and why? And I think I'm going to have to think about this one because there are a lot of people that are more than happy to have on my podcast. And when I think knitting and crafting, and my mum being um, one, and certainly Penny, who lives down the road, um, being another, because we've all got different experiences of our craft, you know. Um, but, yeah, and there's people I watch that I think would be really interesting to talk to. Of course, I'd love to meet Kaz in person. Um, and some of you as well, I, you know. I, I, I will, I will seriously think about getting a, a West Midland meet up together if possible where people can come and meet if you know like, like um Ellie's done for um some of the people that live not too far from her in Norwich so yeah so I'm gonna think about that and I'll get back to you worst job I've ever had well I've only ever had one job really so that doesn't sort of apply to me in as far as I joined the County Council in the property department in 19, December 1981 and I left in August of, of 2015. And I did not the same job, but I worked in admin all that time through property services. And I went from being a scale one stroke two clerk to being um, a senior officer the senior admin officer, not the senior, but a senior admin officer, not admin, business support officer. Sorry, got to use the correct political term I'm in these days. Being senior su business support officer, um, and it took me a long time to get there <coughs> for various reasons. I worked in a technical department, so admin wasn't always as valued. It wasn't as valued until it was missing or things went wrong. Um, the value wasn't always appreciated. Um, I think the disability held me back a bit, even though I went to college and I got even more qualifications after my O levels, after my O and D, which was a full time course. I did um, HNC, Higher National um, Certificate in Public Administration, and then I did my ICSA, which is the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators in public administration which in theory meant I could have letters after my name but there's no way I was going to pay um, the money because my department wouldn't pay it because I didn't need it for the job that I was in because I was still quite low down the um, grades then but I wanted to do it to prove I could do it but going to college was physically hard for me because there were no lifts it was just ramps and if you didn't have ramps it would have had stairs um, and I didn't get a lot of physical help, although I was a lot fitter in those days. And I didn't really know what they were talking about. If I did it these days, I'd have a lot more idea about what they were talking about when in some of the subjects. Cope with the stuff like mathematics and stats and things and accountancy because that was, you know, right or wrong. But I couldn't do um, some of the more sort of nefarious things that they talked about you know what ifs and discuss so and so I was just too young and too inexperienced really so yeah so I've really only had one job and that is supporting my department um, and mainly in connection with their database and their day-to-day -day admin um, career that might have been interesting well I think it would have been computer programming when I was preparing, you know, I'd been to boarding school and then I left boarding school 
didn't stay on to do A-levels, which I could have done, because I wanted to go home. And um, I don't know whether that was a mistake. I don't dwell on it. But, you know, for years I used to dream about going back to do A-levels. So it's obviously at the back of my mind for a while. And then I went to, um, when I was doing my business studies, ordinary national diploma at Redditch College, I was looking for courses to do maybe a degree course or other um, HND courses which are meant full time. And the one that I was interested in was um, HND in Maths, Stats and Computer Programming. And I would have been, at the time, not now, I would have been good at that, I know, because those were my key subjects. Um, you know, I, I took, um, well, I've probably told you before, I got 99% in one exam that was basically maths come stats in, um, when I was at college. But the, the infrastructure and the support wasn't there. I would have needed some physical help if I'd gone away, to ho away from home because I think the nearest uni or college was a way away and I don't know whether I would have got funding. So I just looked at it and I didn't even get the prospectus. I just thought, no, I'm not doing that. So I ended up being on the door for about 18 months until I got a job with um, the county council. Yeah. And I'm not at all bitter about it, but you know, I came top in that class at college and I was the only one without a job at the end of it. And I think that's so telling really. And I don't know whether things would be that bad these days. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm not bitter about it. I'm quite happy with my life, the way it's gone. Um, you know, there's no point looking back. You can't change it. So, and I don't regret what I've done. Now, so that was a bit of a rant, wasn't it? <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, my favourite holiday. <laughs> That's easy in a way. I mean, I've had... I, we always went on holiday when we were children to caravans and that, and they were all fabulous. I've got some wonderful memories of going to Padstow, for instance. Um, but my favourite holiday in terms of something very different, bearing in mind I've never gone abroad, would have to be the canal holiday I went on. Um, there was a lad I worked with and uh, he was doing a sort of a, a block out of uni um what do you call it it'll come to me in a minute some work experience i'm sure he's not called that with our department um and we got talking he said he'd been on canal holiday one thing led to another um and we went with liz and dave my friends uh from school and we did the cheshire ring in a week and that's quite hard going um uh but that was great fun because i was quite good at steering the boat I might put a photograph of me in it <laughs> I might not because um, when I took the photographs into work and somebody said I looked like a monkey on a stick afterwards um, and they weren't being nasty really I like to take things that people say to me at face value rather than trying to add hidden meaning to things but yeah monkey on a stick yeah I, I might put a couple of um, canal boat holiday photographs in here and it was because it was different and because it was active I had so many bruises on my legs I went brown for the first time ever we were all exhausted yeah. we ate well um this was a well she said he's a really good cook um and I did a lot of steering of the boat and it was just really good fun now you've got to bear in mind that Liz and Dave are both visually impaired hence I was at school with them so I could see, and Michael could see, um, but Liz and Dave had to go at steering the boats occasionally, and that was a bit disastrous. Oh dear, I think these days we'd be sued. The damage on the boats and things, um, I think they expect to have damaged boats. It was, But I did break the rudder off at Castlefields in Manchester, and that could have been very dangerous so I don't think about that because it could have killed me quite easily um, but yeah so there we go yeah it was a week long of beautiful weather apart from towards the end we had a couple of days of rain but it was absolutely fantastic and it was an experience I would encourage anybody to do you know the only thing I didn't do is I only got off the boat 
twice in the week. So my legs were like juddering along with the steam. I couldn't stand up when I got off the boat because I was like vibrating like a diesel engine. Because your body gets so used to it. So yeah, so I'll come back to you on the guest thing because I want to think about that. Um, but apart from that, Sally, thank you very much for the questions. And if anybody else has got any, send them my way. So what have I been doing? Well, um, apart from doing crafting and making plans up in my head and tidy, doing the tidy up every other day because I get myself in such a mess in here. Uh, last Tuesday, um, I went to Merry Hill Shopping Centre with my school friends Liz and Elaine and for one reason or another we spent a long day there um, because it takes us uh, from picking Liz up here it takes about an hour and ten minutes to get there but I took Liz home because we'd, we'd lent her our gazebo and I wanted to pick that up so I left here at about quarter past ten to pick Liz up from the bus at ten twenty and I got home just before eight o'clock and I was in my power chair, not this posh thing, but my basic power chair, which is far less supportive. Um, and I couldn't move afterwards. And, and I'm not kidding you, it took me two to three days to recover. I just felt so achy. I had to keep taking my stronger drugs. And I was sort of okay at the time. I don't, you know, I mean, you keep going, don't you? you carry on, keep going, going. Um, but I, I think a lot of it's because I can't wiggle about, you know, I can't, I fidget and I move in this chair because it's like an armchair on wheels and it's got space. But that's got enclosed arms um, and it sort of fits me rather too well, which is my fault, obviously, because I've grown since I had the chair that way before my mother says anything. And, and obviously I can't move as well. So... All these things add up, and I, and I literally, it's a, it's a reminder to me that I really have to pace myself. So, yeah, I didn't do anything then. I didn't go out the house then until um, Sunday. I went to see my mum and dad briefly, um, and I think that was it, really, because, I, yeah, I, I hadn't been out at all, hoping to see Penny, but I just really wasn't in a fit state. Um, and although it doesn't take any effort to sit in this chair and talk like I'm doing to you now, um, yeah, I still felt too tired. But I've got things coming up in September. I've got a belated 60th birthday celebration in Worcester with my friends that I went to Merry Hill with last week. I didn't even buy very much, you know. <laughs> oh, yes, the days have gone when we used to shop till we dropped. Spent most of the time in Weatherspoons talking and then Costa talking. Um, and, and the other thing I could do is meet up with the Tenor girls because I'd put them off as well. Um, but yeah, so a busier September. Hopefully the weather won't be too miserable and we can get out and about. If it's dry, then I'm okay, usually. So yeah, I think I'll call that a day. Uh, probably not as long as I thought it was going to be. Um, I am going to try and branch out into more crafts because you know this ends up half of me talking about what I've been doing and this and what I think of things and only half crafting so um, as long as you're happy with that then we'll continue but I'd love to hear from you really do love to hear from you I'd uh, like to hear what you've been doing I will think about the um, the next mail that I intend to start uh, September-ish, but it will run September, October, November. So we've got plenty of time. And I think it's going to be a jumper cow. But I will definitely, definitely be talking about that next time. So I'm going to go now. You take care. And I will speak to you very, very soon. Okay? Till then a bit. Bye.